Hey, this is Open Mailbox. Today I'm going to show you how to get started developing Rust mods if that's something you're into. First things first, go check out the Oxide website, oxidemod.org. You're going to download the uh, Oxide for Rust libraries. Once that's done, extract it to any directory that you can get to. From there, start a new project in Visual Studio, the C -sharp .NET class library works. We're going to name it Hello World Rust. All right, you won't need any of these includes. And we're going to put it in the oxide.plugins namespace and name the class whatever you want the plugin to be named. From there, Remove all references in the existing project, except for the analyzers, and then add references. You're going to browse to wherever you installed Oxide, or wherever you extracted Oxide. Go into the Managed folder, select all of the DLLs, and add them to your project. Once that's done, <clears throat> add an info block with the name of the plugin the author, and the version number. And from there, you're ready to start developing. Make sure that your plugin inherits from Rust plugin. You can add some hooks from Oxide, and you can use the Oxide documentation to uh, get an idea of what's available, what's available to hook into, right? So the init block just lets us uh, do whatever we want when the when the mod is originally loaded. In this case, we'll just write a function to the admin console. And you can browse through the documentation to find out other places inside of Rust that you can hook into the different behavior of the game. For instance, if we wanted to do something every time a player connected, there's a hook for that. And from here, we could do something like... Uh, um, put a default starting kit inside of the player's inventory as soon as they connect. Uh, we could do any number of different things. But to find out how to actually manipulate the game world, that's a little bit more difficult. There's not really a great source. So what I do is I go to the existing plugins. I find any plugin that looks related or might have information, might have code similar to the code that I'm looking for. I download that plugin, and then I just take a look at the source code. Uh, so here's a plugin for turning people invisible. And here's one for uh, manipulating how our airdrops work. So you can take a look at some of the code here. Um, here's a hook, an oxide hook, for what happens when you throw an explosive. We can check to see if the entity is a supply signal. And if it is, then we're keeping track of the estimated world position of this particular entity. And you can see that we can access the entity's transform position. And a lot of this will look really familiar to you if you have done any programming inside of Unity. Uh, Rust is made inside of Unity, so a lot, of the, a lot of the entity names, a lot of the functions and objects will have very similar names. We're dealing with some familiar types, vector twos, um, get, uh, component entity dot get component. There's various components you can access, and that's pretty much it. So once you have some kind of behavior in your, in your mod that you like, <clears throat> you're going to take the c -sharp file, and all you have to do is put it inside the Oxide plugins directory on your server. And it should automatically be loaded. You should see a loading initialization message in the admin console of the server, and that's all there is to it. So that's how you get started developing Rust plugins. There's obviously tons that you can do from there. I would just use the existing plugins as examples of the different things that you can do. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And I stream several nights a week on Twitch where I do various things like game development, software development, making websites, all sorts of cool stuff. Make sure to check me out there.